All right guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is gonna be winterizing my camper. Stay tuned guys. All right guys, so first thing I like to do is come to the back of the camper and I like to go ahead and get um, the water heater taken care of. Now what I done for my water heater is something that probably not a lot of people have done because I didn't want to keep taking that plug in and out all the time. And another thing I did <coughs> is I put weather stripping all the way around my camper because of the simple fact that bugs like to get in there and you see there's not a single bug in there one so what I like what I did is I took a water um, like a supply line for a for a uh, uh, toilet or something let me zoom in here and show you and I put a cutoff on it like this that way I can just go ahead and drain it a lot easier than taking that plug out every single time. So let's go ahead and drain it. I've already done it anyway. Usually um, my last trip I go ahead and drain it, but just to make sure, go ahead and try it now. Okay, you see there's no water in it whatsoever. Okay, so I recommend putting, and I always keep my cap with me too. I recommend putting uh, weather stripping here just in case um, all along there. That way there's no bugs get in, no bugs will get into your um, your your, uh, your pipes or anything else, so you'd be good on that. Okay, next thing you want to do is go ahead and release your um, pop-out valve. Make sure there's no water coming out of there, but you see there's not. All right, so the next thing you're going to want is you're going to want one of these um, adapters now. They make these um, all day long at Amazon and many camping areas. I made this one. Basically, it's a uh, <laughs> whatever size it is, three-quarter. The half inch half inch to the um, three eighths I guess that is and then you got your air fitting on there okay so this is what you're gonna need if you want to blow your um, lines out with air now one thing I'm gonna caution you is when you do your uh, blowing air out make sure that you don't put more than I only put 30 pounds in mine uh, I'm sure it probably hold a lot more than that but I'm not gonna risk it so let me go ahead and tighten this on here come to your city water connection right here let me go ahead and so you come to your city water connection right here. And open it up and just screw it on. Now you can put um, Teflon tape if you feel like you need to. I'm not going to. Okay, and I've already got my compressor. All right, so next step, step you want to do is make sure you have an air compressor. Now, I have a little one, which never seems to work out for me too well, so I'm going to use this one. You want to make sure you have a regulator and you keep it down. I'm going to keep mine right at 30, okay? I'm going to go ahead and show you. Now, as you see, it has a plus and a minus on it. To get the pressure, see the tank pressure right now is a little under 120. So to keep the pressure down on your line itself, you want to go counterclockwise until it comes down. Now we're going to try to get it right at about 30. All right. Oh shoot. All right, that's about 35 or so, so I'm good with that. All right, let's go over here to the camper and show you how to hook it up. Okay, so my adapter's already in. It's just hand tight. You can crank it down if you want to. I do not. Okay, you just want to take your hose. Now, you got to remember that as soon as you put this in here, it's going to fill the lines up, so... You hear filling up. So let's get it over here and see if there's any water coming out. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, see if there's any water coming out here. You see a little bit did come out, so that's a good sign. And the air is coming out, so this is the weather stripping I was telling you about. It does look like hell, but it keeps all the bugs out. As you see, it's pretty much bug free. I put this on here, like I said, because simple fact that I just wanted it to, when I go down the road, I can open it up and let the water run out when I'm done with the campsite, okay? Now with all the water, I feel it's out of there pretty good. Let's go ahead and close this off and move on to the next step okay so I'm gonna show you what's in my first one which is just a little bit of storage okay so this is the first one this is the big area this is where I keep my grill and stuff like that all right so you got to come all the way back here to the back in this little um hidden spot right here is where my water heater is all right so this is what mine looks like I have um, the cold water or hot water out, the cold water in, and then the bypass right in the middle. So you see right now, it's closed off, right? So what I need to do 
as I need to, uh, whew, sorry, close off the cold water coming in, okay? Let me go ahead and do that. So now with the cold water off, coming in to my supply for my water heater, my hot water going out, off, and my bypass open, that's gonna allow me to flush all these pipes out. All right, let's go to the furthest uh, sink port and I'll show you what to do there. Okay, so like I said before, there's a lot of ways to do this. Everybody does it different. I go to my furthest uh, sink port first or my outlet for my hose. Mine happens to be the sink here in the kitchen, so we'll go ahead and we're gonna go ahead and uh, open it up, let the air come out, the water, whatever else is in the line. Okay, I'm gonna do hot first. There's quite a bit of water left in here, as you can see. Alright, with that one completely done, let's go ahead and do the uh, cold water now. And you'll see that there should be some water coming out here. Okay, so when I'm all said and done, when I know I feel like that has completely got all the water, at least to my satisfaction now, I'll wait until I hear the air compressor kick back off again, and I'll open one at a time again just to make sure that I don't see any, you know, heavy-duty water coming out. You're going to have some residual water in there, and that's just the way it is. But if you get what I got out, or you get out, you should be fine. Okay, I've done this. this is my second time doing it, and I've had no problems whatsoever. A lot of people will put the antifreeze in the pump, run it through their lines, but I don't see no point in that. Why would you want to have all that in there? You can do whatever you want to do, of course. But I personally just don't want to have pink fluid in my lines. Okay? All right, let's go to the next spot, which is the bathroom. I'll meet you in there, guys. All right, so the same goes here. You want to take your little, your little drain plug out, and I'll start with the hot water, and we'll go for the cold. Here we go. <laughs> Okay, so with that one done to my satisfaction, I'm going to try the cold. All right, here we go. Okay, there's no water coming out. I feel pretty good, confident about it. All right, let's turn it off and go to the next one. All right, so the next area you want to do is obviously your bath, your shower. We'll go ahead and do the hot first, like, like I did last time. Now, I'm just doing the hot first. That's just my own preference. It has nothing to do with anything. That's just what I do. Looks like there's nothing in there. Shut that off and do the cold. All right, I feel like it's pretty good. See a little drops coming out. If you want to do your shower, very last. All right, let's go ahead. Look, there's already water running out of that. I don't even have it on yet. I mean, look, it's not even on. All right, we're going to go ahead and turn it on and see what happens. Let's make sure we don't splash ourselves, though. Go ahead and pull it on. As you see, it's dripping pretty decent while it was. All right, I'm going to go ahead and turn the hot on just for giggles. Got both of them on, and I feel pretty confident about that. Guys? All right. Go ahead and turn this off. Drop it out. And like I said, at the very end of each of them, I've been pausing it, but I always just make sure one more time. Okay, nothing? Nothing. Alright guys, let's move to the next one. Alright, the next one you want to do is your throne. It is importanto to do this. Okay? So all you have to do is reach down there with your foot, give it a little foot. Hold your breath in case you got any residual down in there. It looks pretty good to me. Now while you're here, I recommend putting one of these in your tank. There's no reason for it except just for the odor control. So I just do it. Uh, I've been told to do it and you know what? They're so cheap. Why not just throw one in there, okay? You already got water in there because of the simple fact that you're running through your drains. So let's go ahead and put it in there and uh, we'll see what happens. Open back up. 
Drop it in in there. You see it's stuck. I'm gonna have to put some in there to get it out. Not that you care, but I did get it out. It's down in there now, so that's good. Okay, so the same goes if you have an outdoor shower, which I do. So we need to go ahead and make sure we get all the water out of there too. So let's go ahead and get on that real quick. Okay, what I do, I take the head completely off. I just leave it stuck in there, okay? Just what I do. There's no real good reason why I do what I do. I just do it, all right? And you want to make sure that you hold the hose so it doesn't squirt all over you. I'm just going to hold it to my legs. That's pretty funny, right? Turn the hot on first. And I also have an outdoor kitchen, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing here. Turn the hot on first. And then you're cold. And then I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna turn on my water pump. You can run this for a few seconds, they say for a few minutes without burning up. I don't like to do it a whole long time. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna open up one of my, actually both my drains real quick. I'm gonna turn the water pump on, let it run real quick, make sure there's no water in the water pump, and we'll go from there. All right, let's see what happens. All right, water pump is on. And I see nothing. There we go. That just gets the rest of the lines and the pump. Alright, that's all you do. I, mean, I, I didn't pause the whole time. I let you see what, what I did, and there we go. Feel pretty good about that. Alright, so you want to locate your low points of drain, okay? I'm going to go ahead and do this side first. I've already done this, but I'm going to go ahead and do it again and see if anything comes out. I did this at the campsite, so... And there's absolutely nothing coming out of there. Now, I don't leave that open. Because I'm afraid bugs will climb up in there. But you can. I did first year. Nothing happened. So we're going to go ahead and shut that one off and get to the next ones. All right, then right where my city hookup is and the cable and the outdoor shower and blah, blah, blah. I have another little point drain. Which is right here. All right, let me see if I can get a good picture of it. Right there. You've got two valves, one for the hot and one for the cold. Now I feel pretty confident there's something gonna come out of here, so let me go ahead and back the camera up just a little bit and turn it on. Okay, nothing, that's good. All right, let's do the other one. All right, back the camera up a little bit. Next thing you want to do is get a couple gallons of these. Now I keep about four gallons on tap. I just have them because sometimes when you need them and you think, oh, well, I'll go ahead and uh, um, go ahead and uh, windrise a camper. Well, by the time you realize you need to do it, they may not have some stock. So I always get it way ahead of time. So I've had this since last year. Just said having frozen been in my garage. So now all I do is I just put about a cup or two down each of these drains. Okay, just like just like so. So just go ahead and. Uh, Dump it straight in the drain. That'll keep your traps from freezing up. All right? We'll go to each each one and we'll dump some in there. All right, we'll do some in the bathroom. Try not to be on the wall so your wife doesn't get mad at you. All right. Do it in the shower. Now, I will give you some advice on this. On the shower, try to get it in the drain only because when you take a shower in here, this stuff is very slimy. And it takes a while for it to come out of there. You want to put some in your toilet. Same thing goes, you don't want to splash everywhere. All right, we'll go ahead and dump this out. And leave some right in the toilet so the gaskets stay very pliable and they don't freeze shut. Then shut it up. Now, if you got outdoor sinks, you're gonna do one the exact same. Now here, it doesn't really matter to me. I put a little bit more because there's a longer, you see in there, it goes for a long ways. So I put what I think is right, and that's what I think is right. 
All right, so I started out with about a gallon, so I'm gonna go ahead and just finish the rest of it off here. And in the bathroom. Might as well, right? I mean, you can't really do them that. Okay, so the very next thing I'd like to do is to make sure you open your um, refrigerator and freezer and just leave it open. You don't have to leave it open all the way I do, but you don't have to. That way it airs out and nothing's you know stinky in there. And the very next thing I do, to me, I never even thought about it, and a guy that I go camping around said, hey, do you ever uh, flush your propane lines out? And I thought, how the heck do you do that? And he said, you just turn your uh, stoves on, let it burn, then go out there and turn your uh, nozzles off on your propane tank, and it'll bleed all the uh, moisture out of your lines. I thought, I never thought about that. So I'm going to start doing that this year. That's a little tip for me. So he does it, and I've had no problems with mine, but, you know, if something can help, why not try it, right? I mean, it doesn't hurt anything, that's for sure. So let's go ahead and start this up, and I'll show you how I'm going to do it. All right, so with one year's lit, you just want to hit the spark button and hope it lights. And when it doesn't, what do you got to do? Guess when it lights, finally, you want to make sure it's on. And we're going to go out there and we're going to turn it off at the um, at the propane tank. All right, so here is my propane tank right on the front, just like most normal um, campers are. All right, I'll go ahead and we're going to just turn it off. Make sure they're both off. All right, I'm going to close this up so no bugs decide to live in there. And we're going to watch. Oh, I just almost caught it. Maybe you see it, I don't know. But it is completely off, all right? Go ahead and open them all. Make sure everything's good. I believe it is. We'll go ahead and close everything up. We'll call that good. Now, one of the very last things you're going to want to do after you uh, flush all your lines, after you put your uh, antifreeze in your drains, <clears throat> and make sure that all your gas is off, your pilots are off, refrigerator is open is you want to take your battery loose from right here from your uh, power but make sure you turn everything off in the camper okay that means your lights it means anything is going to pull any kind of load because you don't want to have any sparks when you take the battery loose okay i've got all my lights off and uh, i've opened all of my spigots so every spigot that i have in there is completely open one thing i'm going to caution you about is what i did is i opened all my spigots and when we got to the campsite this year hooked the water up and when we just, I don't even know if we were in the camper or we were outside the camper, we were all sitting there in our chairs, water was filling up and my wife said, there's water coming out the front door. I had forgot and left the uh, outdoor sink on. Like I said, leave the spigots open, closed it up, put the uh, water to it and it flooded the inside of the camper, it sucked. We got, luckily we got it on time. Sopped it off, didn't hurt anything. So, I anyway, let's get this battery loose, guys. All right, so you just want to make sure you do not put a wrench across both leads because you're going to have a blow up in your battery. So, I'm going to take the positive off first. Back on. Get the leads out here like so. Get the negative. If you have insulated tools, you might want to use them because I've seen batteries blow up by putting uh, screwdrivers across them, which is not a very good sight, believe me, to say the least. All right, and I just take my leads and I just throw them back down in here. Make sure you keep your nuts back on. No pun intended. All right. You want to put your battery box back on, back to the top cover. All right, guys, there you have it. Completely done. You are ready to go for next year. It's completely safe. There's no uh, antifreeze in your lines, which I do not recommend <laughs> at all. Uh, like I said, leave all your spigots open. That's what I do. You don't have to do it. It's total preference. That's just what I do. I leave all my spigots open. I make sure all my lines are completely air-free. I mean, a water-free by putting the air in there. Just make sure your bypass on your water heater is in the right section. I leave my um, water heater, that little spigot I showed you, I leave that open. So you're free going, guys. Uh, 
all right so that's pretty much it guys um if you like what you see like and subscribe god bless and we'll see you on the next one guys